Welcome to news. Today's day is December 7th, 2018. We are running out of days in 2018, so almost 2019, uh, which, uh, which is the future. Which is the future? 2019. Imagine what it's going to be like going into 2020. That's going to be weird, isn't it? Because 2020 is like the actual future. This is like the future eve that we're going into in 2019. But we'll talk about that as we get closer to the actual holiday. Uh, <laughs> this is going to be weird. 2020 is coming super fast. Uh, today on the news, we've got Game Awards recap. Tumblr. Uh, rip. Uh, we got a new CSGO announcement. Uh, Epic Games launcher. We got a canvas gate quick update on that Diablo 3 contest that I'm sure you guys will all be very interested in uh, A little quick note about Unreal Tournament. It's a tiny little game called Unreal Tournament <sighs> But we're gonna kick things off with uh, with a bit of a more uh, uh, the sadder piece actually we're gonna be talking a little bit about uh, The unfortunate is that it just happened just happened today We've got uh, Daybreak which, by the way, don't forget, like, uh, Daybreak has, like, split. Like, the company is basically split into so many different pieces. So if you, if you follow, like, Arclegger on, uh, on, on Twitch, or I'm sorry, on Twitter, then uh, uh, he just posted, like, two hours ago that they were, they were hiring for positions. And people were like, well, wait a minute, just lay a bunch of people off. And he's like, no, it's a different company, guys, different company. So, yeah, it's, everything's been split in so many pieces. It's hard to tell who actually works for what company anymore. But Daybreak themselves uh, has estimated, estimated to have laid off 70 employees. This is on MMO Bomb, courtesy of our friend, of our friend. Where he is? Look at this. Look at this. Jason Winter. You guys remember Jason Winter? We used to do shows together. Oh, this this silver fox. Um, you could see John Smedley was super upset about it. It's funny because I saw these tweets earlier and I was like, what is he talking about? He said 70 people is a lot. That's the one I saw. And I was like, oh, he must be playing some like new battle royale. <laughs> the first thing I thought, he's playing some new battle royale. He's like, wow, 70 people is a lot. No, 70, 70 people is a lot to be laid off. And John Smedley is fucking pissed. He's pissed. He says, really, really, really angry right now. It's December for fuck's sake. And this is how you treat employees. It is fucked up. It is fucked up to like let people let people go uh, before the end of the year like that. I mean, like seriously, like like three. This is like movie esque, right? This is the stuff you see in movies where you know it's like it's like oh everything was going great and hunky dory, and then oh my Christmas spirit is shattered because I've been laid off. Everyone's laid off from their jobs uh, right before Christmas. But it's Christmas. It's like oh well, I'm sorry, the factory's shutting down, right? Like I feel like this is like an actual movie. Um, and so they said. We are optimizing our structure to ensure we best position ourselves for continued success in the years to come. This effort uh, requires, dude, this effort has required us to make some changes within the organization, and we are doing everything we can to support those impacted in, in this difficult time. As we look to improve efficiencies and realign resources, we remain focused on supporting our existing games and development of future titles. Now, I don't know uh, if the people that were let go uh, received any kind of... Um, any kind of separation pay, any kind of severance, uh, bonus, something. But uh, what makes this even like just, I mean, just think about it. You get laid off three weeks before Christmas. And so what, what do you do when you get laid off? Well, you go and you find another job. Well, how are you going to find another job? Nobody's hiring. Nobody hires over the holidays. Like nobody, as somebody who was a hiring manager for a company for several years, we don't, well, as part of my one of my role, many hats that we wore. It wasn't like that was exclusively what I did. But as somebody who basically fulfilled that role for so many years, Every time the holidays came around, we didn't do any of that shit. It was just kind of like, yeah, we'll just hit them up after the holidays. And that was it. We just didn't, we, we didn't, there's no way. There's, why, why would I do phone screens and in-person interviews, uh, follow-up interviews, and all that shit with somebody right around the holidays? We're supposed to basically be ready. We're supposed to be basically prepping for what's potentially something like a lot of time off for a lot of people. Everyone's taking time off. You just can't fucking do it. So yeah, this is like, th I, I totally agree with John on this. Uh, that this is like extra fucked up, right? It's one thing. Yeah, Telltale laid off a bunch of people, which is a huge shocker to everybody earlier this year. Was it even earlier this year? Or was it just like a couple months ago? God damn. Um, but at least it wasn't like right before Christmas. <laughs> it's like right before Christmas. So hopefully, hopefully they did get uh, uh, a good amount of um, of severance or something. Some kind of some kind of separation package is just basically says, here, look, we know it sucks that we're letting you go right before the holidays. We don't want you to have to worry about having to find a job for at least two months. Let's pay for everything uh, through the end of uh, uh, through the end of January with a severance package of six weeks. Right? That that would basically be it. Right? Six weeks severance package for everybody. Um, and Telltale were still hiring people mere weeks before they went on under. I know, I know. It was the Telltale thing was uh, uh, was a huge shocker. That was just so left field for a lot of folks. And you know, it sucks, but. 
it just uh, it is what it is. Um, and the best thing we could do is just not play daybreak games. Get daybreak games, but I don't think anybody really does. So that that doesn't necessarily really even matter. Ah, next up, that's all we can really say about that, unfortunately, because it's just yeah, like I said, it is what it is. Uh, let's see. So next up, we have the game awards and actually i'm gonna have uh, i'm gonna play the video in the background here this is actually a really great link i'm gonna put the link below uh uh for you guys to go and check out it actually is it's the number four trending on gaming so it's not like it's gonna be very difficult to find uh but it is the uh the game awards in its uh in its entirety and here's what you will do i hope I and so we're gonna basically leave it muted here while they talk and everything but what's really great about about this is this guy mr mvp oh there he is. I was like, where'd it go? Uh, this guy, uh, Libu, has gone through and tagged every single moment with a timestamp. This guy, did I, did I heart this thing? I mean, thumbs up. I'm going to thumbs up this dude. This guy, it, damn it. All right, later. <laughs> Stampy boy. Yeah, seriously, superhero. Man, every single item that they covered in the show they cover, uh, he has it right here. So best RPG, we click on that. We listen to him talk. And the winner for best role-playing game goes to Monster Hunter World. Wow, hey, how about best esports team? And the winner this year again is Cloud9. So now, I mentioned this when we talked about this uh, uh, two weeks ago, I think, when we covered a little bit about the game awards, the nominees. Uh, I said I thought it was amusing that Cloud9 and London Spitfire were both up for best esports teams because they are the same team. Uh, <laughs> they're basically the same. Yeah, same company. Uh, let's see. Best esports event. Vancouver. And the League of Legends World Championship wins. Congratulations. Listen, to listen. LOL. LOL. I don't, I don't think I've ever heard anyone call it that out loud. LOL. I always call it League. Yeah. I, right? Nobody calls it LOL, right? Now, listen, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give him shit for it because he, ho he's, he, he's, he's worked hard to get here. It's a lot, a lot of, a lot of Mountain Dew endorsements and <laughs> went into play just to get to this point. <laughs> he can't, he can't be, he can't, he can't be uh, expected to know everything. Uh, the I best fellow kids. sports coach as voted by the fans, Reaper. Congratulations to him. All right, and then there's a basically a ton of other stuff. Now we're not going to go through a lot of this because it's just frankly too much. Uh, what I will do is I will actually let this play on mute and I'm just going to go through and kind of read and we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the uh, some of the announcements. Uh, this is definitely going to be content ID match. So let's go ahead and choose literally anything else. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so we'll have this. Oh, hey, this is the stars of that movie. Um, so game of the year went to God of War. I think everybody heard that. Everybody heard that. That was the game of the year heard around the world for a positive reason. Uh, I think everybody expected because Red Dead Redemption uh, was up there that it was going to uh, uh, basically take it. Um, I was actually shocked that anything other than Red Dead Redemption won uh, in any category. But while they did win quite a bit, uh, God of War did end up taking home both this one and I believe the best uh, narrative, perhaps, or game direction. Let me see. Game direction. Game direction. Um, it's funny because, because they announced that they won the uh, best game direction and let me go ahead and give us just a little bit of audio here. They announced the, uh, best game direction. And I tweeted out something similar, something along the lines of like, uh, that the God of War franchise, this as a whole deserves so much, uh, so many accolades because of what they've done to gaming as a whole. There's been so many spinoffs. So many people are trying to get, you know, trying to nail that like God of War everything, right? Uh, the memes that have come from it, like it seriously has had a massive influence, uh, over games culture in general, which is super awesome considering it is a PlayStation exclusive, right? Like God, God of War, uh, uh, well, I think all of them actually are PlayStation exclusives. Um, so it doesn't even have the reach, the platform reach that some of these other games, uh, have, and it's already, and, it, and it's won all these awards. Marvel Spider-Man actually is probably the biggest, uh, upset because... Spider-Man, what? That was actually, a, I explained it to Jen because last night we were watching it. And I was saying um, that uh, uh, Spider-Man was, was a surprise because it was exceptional for a, uh, a movie adaptation to video game. Um, but it was also surprising because it was exceptional as a video game standalone right it was just it was just good it was just good uh so but unfortunately it did not win as many awards as some people would have thought but it was a pretty stiff competition best ongoing game fortnite 
Fortnite, we got that. Uh, this is the Red Dead Redemption was best performance. So this is the uh, uh, the the guy who voiced the main character. I can't remember his name. It's in the list somewhere here, but we got a lot of things to go through here. So, um, PlayStation, PlayStation exclusive. That's why I didn't play it either. Yeah, me too. My PlayStation is an awesome paperweight. It's a really good looking paperweight. Like I honestly like I, I couldn't I couldn't argue uh, with uh, aesthetically how it looks. Uh, when it's holding down uh, papers over there. Um, let's see. Best game direction. We are talking about God of War. Best narrative goes to Red Dead Redemption. Uh, best art direction went to a game called Return of Oberdin. So that was, uh, this is a game that like I didn't even know existed until I read the nominations for this. And I was just like, oh, this is an interesting looking game. Uh, let me see if I can find some gameplay for you guys. I can pull it up here. Because it is aesthetically a very interesting looking title. Uh, let me see. Let's see. Gameplay. Here, we're going to blow this up here. So you could see it looks like it, it looks like 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 a, like a Game Boy screen or like not. I don't want to say Game Boy, but those old ass like LCD games. Like it kind of looks like that. It has this like kind of, yeah, this etchy aesthetic or or actually even better. uh, More like a um like an old PC, uh, like hyper card game or something like that. Like these old ass simple games that people would put together. Um, and that's basically, yeah, it's just, it's just the look, it's just the aesthetic that they went with for the, for the title. It's very, it's very cool. It's very unique. Uh, and it did win, uh, for the best art direction for a game. It was up against God of War, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Octopath Traveler, and Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, of those, I feel like its only competition should have really been Octopath Traveler. That's pretty much it. Uh, best score music went to Red Dead Redemption 2, which I feel is, um, is, uh, uh, is a huge loss for Celeste. And I've mentioned before that I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, a, I, th I thought Celeste was just like a slightly above average platformer, but everybody loved it for some reason. Um, but the soundtrack uh, was great. Was it a score or a soundtrack? It was a, it, it was, well, it was a soundtrack. So it was basically like, you know, level song. It was like a typical platformer uh, style of, uh, uh, of music it wasn't necessarily like a like a score that you would experience in like uh in a game where there's like layers that kind of appear to kind of like you know, add or subtract depending on what kind of action is going on on the screen uh let's see best audio design presented by dolby went to red dead redemption 2 okay uh <laughs> performance red dead redemption 2 games for impact went to celeste uh honestly that guy is dead like 100 percent. yeah what is happening here I haven't played the game, obviously. So, um, the best uh, best games for impact, which are basically games that says for a thought provoking thought provoking game with a profound pro social meaning or message. Uh, I didn't pay attention to the story in Celeste. I played it as a platformer, so maybe that's where I'm missing out on. So maybe it is an amazing game from a story perspective. But I, what I did like is uh, what the um, uh, what the developer said, or what one of the developers said uh, at the end of his speech. Uh, which actually made me think, like, maybe I should go play this game. Let me see if I can find it. They won, da, 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 ongoing game, best game direction. What was this one? Games for Impact, Games for Impact. Boy, that's really hard to find on this list. Games for Impact. Oh, Impact. Oh, it's actually not listed. Oh, that's unfortunate. I have no idea where it's at on this list. But anyways, he basically said that, uh, how funny, his guy's got everything mapped out, but that one thing, what a jerk. Um... He has uh, basically what he said was something along the lines of how if 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 the game if the game has helped somebody work through their own personal mental issues, uh, then that was not necessarily the game. It was that person that played the game who found within themselves to make that change. And I thought that was really great. I thought that was a really, really superb mes message. And coming off of like the games for impact, getting that award, I was like, that's what a what a great message <laughs> for a uh, for that particular award. I thought it was great. Um Best independent game, Celeste. Uh, it was up against Dead Cells, Into the Breach, Return of Oberdin, and The Messenger. This is a pretty thin list here. There's a lot of really great indie games, but not so many of them get to surface. Uh, they don't, you know, they don't get surface as much as uh, uh, as other games get to, unfortunately. So, um, so really, I feel like in this last list, I, you know, personally, I feel like Dead Cells was a better play. Dead Cells is a super great play. Like you can. You, it, it plays super fucking well. Uh, graphically, it's amazing. Animations are super great. Uh, Crosscode was not in it. I know Crosscode's not in it. This, this is the thing. It's like when we talked about this. I don't want to like you know beat a dead horse here or fed a horse, whatever it is now. Uh, I don't want to feed a fed horse. But um, when we talked about this initially, I, I, I it, we were talking about um, um, about 
how they surface, how they look at games that basically have some any layer of popularity, uh, any level of popularity. They're like, yeah, that's probably a good one. And they basically include that in the list instead of necessarily looking for the real good, hard to find uh, uh, indie games and put them on the list. So it's a popularity contest is basically what it boils down to. Best mobile game. Best mobile game went to Fortnite. Just kidding. It went to Florence, but I seriously thought I was going to go to Fortnite. I really thought I was going to go to Fortnite uh, <laughs> because Fortnite was in the category. Oh man, let's see. Best action game, Dead Cells. Fuck yeah, so it did win something, so good. Uh, Warframe was actually not included in anything uh, on the uh, nominees, uh, pretty much anywhere. Role-playing game, Monster Hunter World, we already saw that. Uh, fighting game, Dragon Dragon Ball Fighters. Uh, <laughs> best family game, which Overcooked 2. That was actually kind of interesting because I thought for sure that Super Mario Party, just because of its... Uh, um, just because of just, you know, the, the brand, the franchise would have actually won that, but Overcooked 2, uh, ended up taking it. I actually have it on Switch. I should probably play it. Um, the Nintendo Lab, Nintendo basically had three opportunities to win, by the way, guys. They had Super Mario Party, they had, uh, Mario Tennis Aces, and the Nintendo Labo. So they had three opportunities to win, three nominations, and they still lost. <laughs> Best strategy game. This one I was actually disappointed in. The best strategy game ended up going to Into the Breach, which is fine. I mean, it's it's great. Yeah, I love the developer, right? All that, fine, yeah. But, but, I really felt like Frostpunk should have taken it. Um, yeah, I feel like Frostpunk should have taken it. I really do. Um, Valkyria Chronicles, I really love Valkyria. I really love that game. But Frostpunk, Frostpunk, like, definitely hit me better than better than Valkyria Chronicles into the breach couldn't hold my attention for longer than what 30 minutes something like that um I didn't play the banner banner saga and Battletech was just it was fun it was good but the story-wise I feel like story-wise music basically as a total package I feel like uh, uh Frostpunk should have won it but they got a nomination which is which counts for something uh the best sports racing game went to Forza Horizon uh, that would they were up against uh, Mario Tennis Aces, FIFA, NBA, Soccer. Uh, they were the only racing game in the category. Uh, in the category that's for best sports slash racing game. Weird. <clears throat> Frostbug was more about the soundtrack than the game for me. The soundtrack definitely added to us, obviously. Wait, I'd pick what? Pick which? Oh, Forza? Uh, oh, the Frozen continuation of Banished. Oh, Banished. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay, sure, sure. I, I'll take that. I'll take that. Uh, best multiplayer game went to Fortnite. No shocker there. Best student game. Uh, we didn't play any of these games on any, any of our channels here, but went to a game called Combat 2018. Uh, best debut indie game went to The Messenger, the Ninja Gaiden uh, spiritual successor. Uh, best esports game went to Overwatch. Its comp competition was CSGO, Dota, Fortnite, League of Legends, and of course, obviously Overwatch. So Overwatch took that. Uh, took that home. I don't watch. I don't watch any of these uh, guys. On uh, I'm really bad. I'm really bad at esports, guys. Just I can watch StarCraft, I guess. Not included. Uh, the best esports player presented by Omen by HP by HP uh, went to Sonic Fox McLean. Uh, he won. He won. Yeah, no Sarah. Sarah was on the list, which sucks. But. But Sonic Fox won the uh, Dragon Ball Z tournament, uh, what was it, a few months ago or whatever? And his actual, his actual uh, uh, reception was actually pretty funny. Uh, let me see. Uh, it was the best esports. So I could find that link. Best esports player. Wow, they, they, wow. How come I can't fucking search the uh, code event? I guess it doesn't have everything uh, tagged here, unfortunately. Well, that sucks. I have to find another video. I'm sorry. I thought for sure we'd have the best esports player. The Game Awards. Sonic Fox. Here it is. Presented by Joel McHale, which I thought was pretty great because he helped host the show a couple years ago. So he comes up. He's got his... Uh... <laughs> Let's just fucking his esports up here. Let me go. Boop. There we go. So he's straight up in, in, full, in full regalia. <laughs> <laughs> he goes up there and he's so he's so excited. It's so great because he's just a regular dude, right? And look, look at this fucking crowd. He's just like <laughs> trying to like own it. Joel McHale doesn't know what to do. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I really want this shit. Oh my god. <laughs> <sighs> I love <mom. laughs> Uh I guess I wanna say 
this is a big honor. Uh, I kind of just really, really enjoy playing video games competitively. Um, I've never really, really done it for the fame. I kind of just enjoy the rush of like beating people up, you know? Like, <laughs> I don't know. Like, even like, uh, I'm sure you guys the story of. Uh, uh. When I won it's fucking great. It's I'm so glad that he did this. That he went up there in character, right? I mean, if you go if you go to his uh if you go to his Twitter account, uh it's what his description says, like right in the top line it says black, queer and furry. Uh and then his top tweet is basically I'm the best Dragon Ball Z player in the world. Uh it says, it says I'm gay, but I'm also the best Dragon Ball Z player in the world. Come fight me or something like that, something like that, right? Um but anyways, I thought this is probably the best like uh <laughs> speech because he was just so fucking over the moon about it uh and just so happy i thought it was great um he was up against a bunch of other people that i don't know <laughs> so i'm glad that somebody knew one uh best esports team we already know it's cloud nine we knew it was cloud nine before we got into it of course going on cloud nine who else would it be uh best esports coach cloud nine's coach reaper uh let's see best esports event league just fine. I didn't really pay attention to any of the events, uh, any of the sports. <clears throat> uh, best esports host went to FJ uh, Siox Deportere. I don't know that. Not Red Eye. Not the uh, uh, not hit the, uh, him and or not Golden Boy. I really only know Golden uh, Golden Boy and Red Eye. So um, best esports moment was C9 coming back. So Cloud Nine just basically take everything. Cloud Nine. Just I know. Just just take it. Just take it all. Content creator of the year. This one was actually kind of interesting. Content creator of the year went to uh, Ninja, obviously. Of course, it went to Ninja. Of course, um, Ninja. Ninja took it. Uh, Doctor Lupo, Myth, Pokemon, and Willy Rex. I don't know any of these. Uh, what these other uh, content creators make, but I'm told that four out of five are Fortnite content creators. So. There you go. That's basically all you need to know. Uh, <laughs> at, at this year's Fortnite Awards 2018. No, I mean, overall, I feel like I feel like it was not a bad show from a rewards perspective. Um, some of the categories obviously could use a little bit of work, but, you know, we're we're people who I think pay attention to the games industry on a level that is um, that is maybe one layer deeper than what these award shows put out. And this exists in every industry. This exists in every single industry. Every award show is like surface level stuff. It's like it's, it's basically this. These are the these are the winners based off the ones we kind of scraped off the top. The ones that kind of flowed to the top. We took that we took that top layer and we made an award show out of it. Um, it's not like people who again pay attention to uh, to basically recommendations from friends and stuff or these smaller games that uh, that pop up. And so that's you know that's that's basically that's just the way it is. That's why Fortnite is four out of the five. Uh, awards uh, or for the four, four of the five content creators uh, as nomina uh, nominees. So, so there you go. That's it for the game awards. Did I make it? Did I make it through in decent time? Let me see where we got here. Uh, well, like like only thirty minutes, <laughs> twenty minutes, something like that. Uh, twenty minutes. That's a lot longer than I wanted to spend on it, but it's fine. <sighs> Next up. Wait, who's a Fortnite streamer now? Wait, so is everybody on the list of Fortnite streamer? Son of a bitch. <laughs> wow, well, there you go. Uh, apparently, I need to be a Fortnite streamer, guys. It's the only way I'm going to be successful in this industry. So, the next thing up is um, Tumblr. You guys all know Tumblr, right? Tumblr, this is like the, this is like the biggest news to hit, what, Monday, I think? Uh, Tumblr is banning all not safe for work material. Happy birthday, Terrell. Tumblr is... Banning all not safe for work material, which was pretty much the only reason to really go to Tumblr. And the reason why was pretty obvious, actually. Um, Apple sucked Tumblr into its walled garden where sex is bad. So, yeah, that's basically what happened is Tumblr. Tumblr uh, had to basically give in to the App Store requirements of not allowing access to pornography. And so, you know, they basically they came down on Instagram. Instagram's going hard on making sure that they basically remove and take down a lot of posts. Uh, so Tumblr's decision is not surprising. Um, if you guys follow, if if you guys follow as many uh, uh, Instagram influencers as I do, then you'll know that there was a lot of 
uh, a lot of a lot of these influencers of uh, photos are being removed uh, over the past uh, two weeks or so. Like really, like like they were going ham. Lots and lots. Like one one uh, influencer lost half of her posts. She had 150 posts. 75 of them were gone because of how hard the Instagram was coming down on it. So so this is basically Apple must have basically reached out to all of these guys and been like, look, it's too easy to access pornography or lewd material uh, through your app. So you either fix it or we remove you from the app store. And for an app like Tumblr or Instagram, this is this is huge. And so, yes, like Gaz says, I, for one, welcome our new morality overlords. So so whatever whatever Tim Cooks thinks thinks is reasonable for our uh, uh, for our uh, media consumption is what we're going to get. For those of us that are actually on, obviously, uh, on, uh, on, on iOS, unfortunately, far-reaching, far-reaching these decisions go, like, just because you would think if you're an Android user, you're like, ah, oh, to deal with that shit. Yes, you do, <laughs> because these, it's just, these decisions are platform level. They're not, they're not, IO, they're not OS level. They're not uh, uh, independent of each other. So Instagram is big enough that Apple might be the one pressure to bend instead, except Facebook is spineless. Yeah, face, Facebook has enough issues right now uh, to want to go up against uh, Apple. Maybe what they should do is just basically just be like, yo, we'll give you guys uh, some user data if you want to uh, <laughs> ease up on some of these regulations for us. This is not beyond, this is not beyond them to do this. Uh, so yeah, Tumblr, Tumblr is uh, unfortunately basically dead. I mean, that's pretty much it. Like, like there was no other reason to really go there. And um, yeah, I mean, I haven't, I haven't been to, I haven't been to Tumblr in like a long ass time outside of like a couple models will like link to their Tumblr for their stuff. And that's pretty much it. Like using Tumblr has been a huge bitch. Like you couldn't even do anything without logging in, uh, uh over the past like year or so. And it's just a fucking mess. I, I did not see the Pornhub tweet about it. Well, Pornhub is basically going to be the home of everything because they, oh, I did see that. Never mind, I did see it. Uh, they basically said that you can upload videos, art, pictures, whatever. You always have been able to do this. People could subscribe and do it. Basically there's pitching. Like we could, you could do all this stuff on Pornhub if you want. Um, <clears throat> and great. That's basically where, that's basically where it's going to end up uh, living. There's a lot of porn, but there's also a lot of not porn on it. Yes. Well, the not porn stuff is not going away. So if you, if you have fan fix and stuff on there, you're trying to catch up on there, blood glass, then, uh, then it's still there for you, buddy. <laughs> uh, I see people's Instagram, but I've never clicked a single link to a Tumblr. Well, it's all, it's, I mean, it's just, you know, if, if you follow the, like I follow a bunch of models. And so obviously uh, they, they would, they would have, they would want a place to be able to post their, um, the work that they do. That's not censored. And there's not a whole lot of, um, not a whole lot of options for that, unfortunately. So, so yeah, uh, let's see next up. This one's actually kind of kind of an easy one here. Let me see. Uh, next up is do, 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 do. Epic is announcing or has announced an updated uh, launcher that now has a store. Epic is competing directly with, uh, with Steam. Not the Apple and Google App Stores. Time, dumbasses. That's not how, that's no, no, that's not what they're doing. But whatever, it's Time Magazine. So I guess, I guess whatever. They tried. They tried. Uh, already they have games on here. You can see my library is super stacked. I'm really jumping in just, just balls deep on this thing. Um, they have a, a pretty, you, you look at this, it's like, this is, looks pretty good. It's funny because we played Unreal Tournament on Sunday night for Subnight. And, uh, and, and I, I, I noticed that they had a new launcher and I was like, oh, cool. They cleaned up the launcher. I didn't realize that they were doing it for the release of this thing. Slow down with the per I know, I know, I gotta slow the fuck down, man. This is a whole two free purchases. <laughs> as long as they don't do a shitty job curating like Valve, it will do well. So, yeah, let's talk about that for a second because every store does this. Every store has the same problem. The eShop, Nintendo eShop did the same thing. They're still suffering from the same thing. The biggest problem is curation. How do you surface games that are that 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 people want to buy. How do you surface these games? How do you find these games? Um, like right now, it's like looking at this list. It's like 
I, I mean, these are the free games they're offering. They're offering basically one free game every two weeks, which I think is pretty fucking cool. Something that Valve doesn't do. But even though you could get basically free games on Valve all on on uh, Epic or sorry on Steam all the time, um, this is a great way of kind of making it kind of a PSN uh, release type thing. Is a store games for anyone or just devs under the Epic umbrella? It's for anyone. So that's the thing. So that's the thing we're, we're, we're talking about here is that. They, um, so first off, let's talk about surfacing of games here, right? Um, this is great. I mean, it's also it's coming soon, okay? Coming soon, coming soon, right? Coming soon, coming soon, coming soon, coming soon. Yeah, 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 coming soon. But if this is the way the store looks like at, like, when they're, when they actually start getting, um, they actually start getting, uh, uh, uh games, then they're gonna be in trouble. Because this is only, on this page, there's, like, I mean, there's mod, okay, so if we just look at, like, from here all the way up to here, this is like 20 games, right? Steam releases 20 games like a half a day. There is no way that this is going to scale. They're going to have to flesh this out a little bit more. It may look pretty. You may look at it. You may look at it and be like, wow, this looks pretty good. But it's useless. It's totally useless um, if you actually want to look at it from a perspective of how do I find games. There's not yet, like you said, there's not even a search function. Uh, but there's also not a lot of games. So... So we have to give, we have to give, we'll give them time, but they, but this is not sustainable. This, this layout is not sustainable uh, for scaling. Um, Rebel Outlaw, yeah, Rebel Galaxy Outlaw is going to be exclusive to Epic Store. You're going to see a lot of exclusives probably because guess what? Epic has money. <laughs> Epic has a lot of money. Uh, so they're going to do essentially what the console wars did. And they're going to try to um, get a bunch of exclusives. And that's, there's, there's unfortunately not a whole lot we could do about it. Um, except, I guess just let it happen and just not play the game or something. I don't know. But like some of these games you're going to want to play. So, I mean, for me, I, I, it's annoying to have yet another one. It's, it's annoying to have yet another one, another uh, platform to, um, uh, that sells games. But as we've already seen, you play, you play has not built itself up to be a direct competitor at all with uh, um, with Steam. Not to mention, they only support their own games. Uh, Origin, same thing. They only support their own games. Uh, so they're not a direct competitor to Steam. It's great that there's another, you know, we guess it's not all just Steam uh, monopolizing everything, but yes, they do have a monopoly on everything because they are uh, everywhere. Everybody has a Steam account. If you have a PC, you put a new game, you have a Steam account. Um, if you don't, then you're one of the weird ones. So that's, that's real. I mean, let's be realistic. That's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, but they have the money to do this and they are bringing in, they are allowing basically any developer to come on board. Their cut is, uh, 12% at a random, uh, 12% and they're giving 88% to the developers themselves, uh, to the developers. Um, and if you use the unreal engine, uh, there's like an additional cost or whatever, basically you can make some more money. So the, if you're wondering, the cut for the split for Steam is, I believe, 70-30. So it's already, um, didn't Valve lower the 30% cut? I think they lowered it to 30%. <laughs> uh, I didn't see any other number. So credit me if I'm wrong, my co-host. But, uh, but yeah, it, it seems like uh, uh, Steam's, Steam's response was, well, guess what? We'll go to uh, something that's not as good. <laughs> um, let me see. I thought they lowered it twenty percent. I don't. Yeah, I don't know about that. So I think it's thirty percent for large volume sales. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Scott Hartsman uh, made a, a comment about how you can't really scale this large. Like basically, you can't really scale this because the cost for hosting these games will end up costing more uh, as you get into like. The small for the smaller games and for like the middle of the road games. Uh, the big games pretty much pay for themselves, but the smaller games could be an issue. But listen, so long as Fortnite continues to be a massive money maker, they don't necessarily need to worry about money right now. They're making more money than they even know what to do with. So much so they're like, let's just fucking make a Steam competitor, and they did. And so, yeah, that's it. I think it's great. It says ten. Okay, here we go. Hogwai says. 10 million in sales will cut 5% off the take. And I believe there is more scaling if you sell more. I have to look into that because on the surface, all I saw was the 88% going out to developers. Let me pop this open real quick and take a look. It says 12%. This is a big change considered industry. Uh, let's see. So you get an additional 
Uh, so UE4 on Steam. Oh, okay, you get an additional 5% for that. Unity on Steam, uh, 70-30. UE4 on Epic Games, uh, 88%. Uh, and Unity on Epic Games is 88%. So that's what they released. There may be some other small numbers. I'm just reading this directly from... Uh, from their articles, um, but there's probably more uh, fluctuations there. But honestly, it doesn't matter. It's a better deal than Steam. That's the bottom line. We don't have to argue the semantics here, like, oh, maybe it's this plus this, if you have this much sales, or whatever the fuck, it's better than Steam. It's a better cut than Steam. And so that is, that's the important thing, is that Steam is now going to have to um, find some way, I guess, to step it up and compete with, uh, <laughs> with this. And so what, what, what better way for Valve to respond to this craziness? Let me see here. But would their price be better for the end user? I'm pretty sure there's probably some kind of like manufacturer grade pricing map we used to call it in retail, but I'm sure there's some kind of like some kind of clause that basically says you can't sell on one platform or you can't host it on like Steam and then sell it somewhere else for cheaper. Like, I'm pretty sure there's probably something like that in there somewhere because it would only make sense for them to write that into as a clause and in, in their uh, agreement somewhere. This is going to force Steam, though, to um, uh, it is going to force Steam to basically get, treat their devs as customers, I guess. Right. Like right now, they're basically just like a consignment shop and they don't really do it. Like, it's, it's like, yeah, bring us your games and we'll just sell them. Uh, and that's it. We'll give we'll give you whatever money we get for it, whatever. Uh, but but with co with actual competition, they're going to have to uh, uh, they're, they're they're going to have to actually cater to these developers and compete for them. So is Valve doomed? I don't know. My buddy, my, I have a friend who thinks that Valve is doomed uh, in like two years time. I think it takes a lot. I think it's going to take a lot. It's going to take some years before we see. Uh, Valve start to lose a um, a footing in this industry in terms of like actual competition, and I'm thinking like two years. I think two years, and uh, we'll probably see. Wow, Epic is so big; it's basically a direct competitor with Valve. But right now, the install base that Valve has is it, and not just to mention the in, the install base is huge. Of course, right? We all all of us here. I, I'm probably sure there's probably none of you guys that don't have a Steam account. Um, and then there's a uh, uh, Obviously, yeah, so all the games we have on Steam, there's all the ways that you could play, like share with your family and all that stuff. And so not only is it now like your Steam, uh, is, is it just your, your, your Steam profile with your games? Now it's like, well, if you have kids or if you have a friend or something like that, they could play your games and you could basically hand those over to them uh, you can, with the Steam link, which I know is now defunct, but still being able to stream your games to, uh, to an app, basically that they're converting all to an app um, is awesome. And these are things that Epic has not yet done, but given how much money Epic has, they're going to do it. They're going to do whatever they can to feature match Steam. Um, probably not the porn stuff, though. Probably not. It took, it took a long time for, for, for Steam to come around to, uh, to adult content. Uh, Guns, I saw your comment here. I was like, yes, map is the thing, but digital platforms are exclusive to the issue and creating a lot of competitive marketing place issues. Uh, well, yeah, map map is a thing, and I and I feel like well, it may not be exactly what they're, the terminology they're using in uh, with this whole uh, 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 you know competitive market thing. Uh, I'm willing to bet that any game that posts, let's say, 19.99 on Steam, but then turns around and sells for 14.99 on uh, on Epic, will uh, will have their game removed from Steam, removed from Steam, and we'll see an article about it. And I mean, it's not gonna take long for us to get that. I would say six months or so before we get a pretty good. Uh, amount of uh articles on that where basically it's like oh yeah look at it. steam is basically uh strong arming their uh their developers into doing blank we should protest steam oh fuck steam gaben no oh, duh, right which is gonna happen it's gonna happen live long enough to see yourself become the villain uh let's see let's see next up we have uh let me see valve's response to this they were like whoa hold on a second epic's gonna make themselves their very own Steam competitor. Well, that means we need to make ourselves a Fortnite competitor. I'm talking about Danger Zone, CSGO Danger Zones. Zone. 
Yeah, it's a real thing. So they're actually going to be taking CSGO and they're going to, I should just cue that up a little bit later, but that's fine. You guys get the joke. Uh, so Valve's response is, let's go ahead and make a Battle Royale. So that way we can have lots of money to throw around just like Epic does. Uh, and so they did. They announced today, Counter-Strike Global Offensive is receiving a Battle Royale mode titled Danger Zone. It's 18 people or 16 if you queue solo. The matches last about 10 minutes. And is this song still going? Oh, okay, I should probably stop that before a mistake, <laughs> before something happens. <laughs> uh, so they are going to be offering CSGO for free uh, and offering their very own spin on Battle Royale. Woo, man. It feels like they rush at so many glitches. Oh, really, Mysterious? Yeah, I, I haven't played it. Um, it is not good from what I saw. Jeez. You would think that you would think that they'd be able to pull it off. I mean, like CSGO is such a solid game. It wasn't like they just came out with a game just out of nowhere. It wasn't like Fortnite, but they just came out a game out of nowhere. You know, it's it's like in PUBG. It's just built something new. Uh, it is actual garbage, Falcon says. Man, is it really that bad? Well, well, the verdict is in. And that's so that's the other thing too, Victor. I'm glad you brought that up. Because one of the big things about, you know, you play CSGO and you cheat, you get banned, you lose your Steam account or whatever, you get VAC banned, uh, and you have to buy another copy and all that good stuff, right? It's basically a huge pain in the ass whenever you get, uh, you know, you get banned. Um, because you have to buy the box again, you have to buy the game again. Well, it's free now, so I guess it doesn't matter. So they could just continue to go back and get VAC banned and do it again and get VAC banned and basically have a bazillion accounts for whatever it is that they want to, you know, for however many times they want to do it until they get bored. Uh, it feels exactly like when they brought in the community to work on TF2. Feels weird dominating all the new players that never played CS. The skill gap is huge. Oh, I bet it is. Oh yeah, for sure. CSGO is like, that's, there's, that's, it's a game been around so long. People are so fucking good at it. It's gonna take forever for these people to jump. Like I looked at it, I was like, I'm, there's no way I'm gonna play that. Like I don't, I don't even play CSGO, period. Uh, there's no way I'm gonna jump in there even attempt, even attempt to do that because I just, there's, the skill cap is so high, there's no way. Um, Fortnite opened $1 million tournaments where it was flooded with aimbotters and wall hackers. That's right, there was that whole thing, huh? That was a long time ago. So that is, that's basically where Valve stands on this whole thing. They're going to um, release their own, their own uh, uh, Battle Royale, 18 players, 10 minute matches, and apparently it's just a huge uh, uh, piece of shit. So good to know. Thank you, my co-host, for keeping me well informed on this. I'm glad you guys all got a chance to check that out. Um, Let's see. Valve does have their Prime account system, which requires a linked phone number. Oh, but it does it. Um, how does that tie into that? Actually, like playing. Like, can I? Do I have to do that, or do, or do you have to like? Are they are there actual uh, servers or something that filter for based on Prime account, so you can only play on those and not have to worry about those people? Uh, Counter Strike is asking to get abused for weeks to gain the skills to play it against the hardcore. Yeah. It's Prime members can queue with just Prime. Okay, that's what I figured. All right, so so there you go. So there, at least there's an option there if you want to uh, try to avoid some of the cheaters, which you know there's definitely going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of. Already, already, when you watch any any content creator or streamer uh, playing uh, PUBG or Fortnite, whatever, anytime they die, they always say the other person cheating. So, because no one, nobody ever loses in a fair fight. No, 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 not me. Not me. No way. Not Mr. Streamer. Can't lose in a fair fight. Must be cheating. So, yeah. <sighs> Another reason why Quick Champions is not popular among new players. Oh, because of that, yeah. I don't understand why people are giving negative views just because they made the game free. Oh, just because? Well, I mean, I think they're because they're looking at it from the perspective of like, well, you just basically introduce a whole bunch of cheaters to the title. But if they have the prime thing, then it kind of negates that. And you're basically just dealing with a bunch of people that are just basically mad just because they feel like getting mad on the internet, which is not unusual. The <sighs> next thing on the list, the Diablo eternal collection which i have on switch and i enjoy very very much but i could use my copy of diablo and my switch to win a copy of diablo and a switch which is awesome all i need to do to get this to, to get involved in this competition is to take a photo of diablo 3 on the nintendo switch or Diablo 3 Nintendo Switch case, and then upload it so I could win a Nintendo Switch with Diablo 3. This is so fucking stupid. This is so fucking dumb. I'm sorry, but this is just, this is just dumb. Dumb! But people are doing it. 
I guess like I, I maybe maybe they went they went the bag wars. <laughs> it's like the great bag wars of 2018. <laughs> Warframe is also doing a photo competition at the moment. Yes, but but is it is it is it just like this? It's like, don't you guys have a switch? Photoshop? Yeah, exactly. Some of these guys, some of these guys probably photo. Oh, you can't click on. I can't. Oh, here we go. Uh, that looks pretty fucking photoshopped, dude. He actually, you know, it's not. It's not. It's not photoshopped. Look, he actually has the Diablo. He already has the Diablo switch. He's gonna go for the. This is see. This is saying this is stupid. Do they check if it's your D3 and Switch? No, probably not. If they did, that'd be another layer of stupid, but whatever. Uh, but yeah, seven votes, two votes, two votes, one vote. So I guess you upload it. People will vote on them. Uh, people are trying to get super creative with, uh, with, with the photos that they put up here. But ultimately, it's still pretty silly because you have, to, um, you have to already own a copy of the game that you're trying to win a copy of. Just, just dumb. Why, Blizzard? Why? Why are they? Why is Blizzard trying so hard? They're like, well, hold on a second. Slow down, Bethesda. Slow down. Let us get a piece of this action, this ineptitude streak. We need to maintain this. Holy shit. And then Bethesda, they've had their own line of awesomeness happening this past week or so. Uh, let's see. Where do I start? Where do I start with this one? Uh, I know. We'll start with the... I don't have any Reddit threads on this, but which is fine because this didn't necessarily originate on Reddit. But that's a sure winner. Uh, we need more beer so they can hold more. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So an update on Canvas Gate, uh, Canvas Gate 2019, 2018. Sorry. Uh, so Bethesda says we are finalizing manufacturing plans for replacement canvas bags for Fallout 76 Power Armor Edition. If you purchase the Collector's Edition, please visit this link and submit a ticket by January 31st, 2019. We'll arrange to send you a replacement as soon as the bags are ready. Uh, so this was obviously a reaction to, um, well, uh, to the fact that they, uh, they totally dropped the ball on the bag thing. They gave everybody a shitty, uh, a shitty bag, a shitty vinyl bag or something because canvas was in short supply, but they found some, they found some canvas they found enough to get uh, a bag to anybody that wants to write in and get one. Uh, and yeah, wouldn't it be great if we knew uh, how many actual sales they made? Do they, they make you send back the cheap bag first? That would be, that would be a, that would be terrible. You imagine that? Please send back the old bag. Fuck you. What I do love though, this comment, I actually, uh, is this the top one here? So this one is great. So this guy says, well, your form is as broken as the game. Not only did you not bother to name the phone field properly, it won't accept the PDF file. Oh, great. Look at the other thing. So, yeah, it's a phone number, LBL, invalid file. So it says PDF, but you can't actually upload a PDF. And it says, can you do nothing right? And they respond with, hi, clearing your cache, deleting your cookies, using a different web browser, or using a different device may be able to resolve your issue. And he's like, first of all, I'm a full stack developer and my cache is wiped on every launch. Second, don't make me pull your JS and expose the lame regex expression you probably pulled off stack exchanged and use in your file path parser. Do you even internet? And I love that this guy stacks. And so, so if we click on this, he actually did go back and da, 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 and he says, I found your problem. In this line, 848. This is stupid. Never split on the first dot. Use last index of. So, <laughs> so he he went through and he pointed out the issue, so that way they could go through it and resolve it, resolve that problem. But that wasn't the only problem. No format C. <laughs> Enter. Uh, that wasn't the only issue. It goes further than this. At Bethesda dis the supports, I am receiving other people's support tickets on my Bethesda account. I have numerous people's receipts for Power Armor set that includes their email and home address and the type of card used. This is not good, right? No, it is not good. So their form, their whole system was apparently not maintained very well by the community, which is a problem. Um, but... It did allow everybody to access, I guess, other people's information. And, and also, open, close, comment on other people's tickets. So other, so you could go and create a ticket and then switch over and then start to, like, basically, there was actually a, there was a screenshot somewhere. I wish I had it. There's a screenshot somewhere where people were talking to it. They were, like, using it like chat, responding, like, like basically chaining things together. 
uh, uh, underneath the comment section. Uh, and then uh, over here, it's this is basically the, the Bethesda forum. Uh, it says right here, it says, beware that uh, with what information you put in your tickets, because they are basically public. Uh, and it, says, it seems like the code of the website sucks as much as the one of the game. Please wake up, Bethesda. This is becoming really serious here. You might want to fire all your disabled coders ASAP. Oh, this is English second language here. Uh, for the good of the players and the Fallout series. Thanks. At this point, I'm putting money on Bethesda, pulling a social experiment on us. Oh, man. <laughs> Who's just a prank, bro? Fewer than 123 customers' support tickets were submitted and may have been partially or fully viewed by others accessing the customer website. Of those 123 tickets, it appears that no more than 65 customer support tickets contain personal data that may have been exposed. Oh, okay, so only, only 65 people. Fuck those guys. There's like, what, six, seven billion people in the, in the world? What are we going to trip over 65, folks? It's fine. We're just... It's all good. It's a it's a prank, bro. Social experiment. We're in the process of contacting customers who may have been impacted. Uh, one of the things that it's not mentioned here anywhere, but I guess one of the things that was also leaked along with this information was passport numbers. Um, that was in another tweet that I saw. Now I didn't see the passport numbers, but before they deleted a bunch of these photos on Reddit because people were posting photos with personal information, uh, you could actually see all this stuff. Um, yeah, and so so let's talk about yeah. So leaking privacy information is extremely punishable in the EU. Yeah, so the EU is uh is pretty big on that. They just had the whole uh, uh the new EULA, which is not necessarily not EULA. Sorry, uh oh god, I can't remember the name of it. But basically, they have a new privacy thing that they made. Remember, we got the emails earlier this year. GDPR. Thank you so much. Uh yeah, so the GDPR basically had everybody re, re sign up, re accept their their privacy terms or whatever. Um, oh, the private password thing was a different leak. Oh, thank you so much, kids. It was a different leak. Oh my god, how many leaks can we have? Ugh. Anyways, so yes, um, Bethesda just, just they're just they're just at every step of the way, at every step of the way. It's like, how can you fuck this up? They're like, we'll find a way. We will find a way to do this. Oh my god, how how do they keep doing this? It's the gift that keeps on giving. People who People who didn't buy the game are getting hours and hours of entertainment by not playing the game. Uh, it's fucking crazy. Oh, the Marriott. Thank you so much, Marriott. It was the Marriott. It was the Marriott. It was Olivia de Grace that retweeted. Okay, so it was the Marriott that released, uh, uh, that uh, had a, a data breach and they lost a bunch of information. So there you go. Thank you, kittens. Uh, with Facebook recent news, I'm happy I never uploaded my passport to them. I know. Yeah, Facebook, the whole, um, the, the leaked emails and all that. Bethesda finds a way. Yes, yes. Oh, man. Um, so I guess next week we'll follow up with whatever else Bethesda manages to fuck up between now and then. And we'll go from there. Uh, not buying Fallout 70 is a better, better decision day by day. It just works. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's real. Um, next up, this one's a bit of a this is a bit of a sadder note. Epic is no longer developing Unreal Tournament. The current version will continue to be available, but no further updates are expected. We played this game on Sunday, and we 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 had a pretty good time. We had a pretty good time. Um, but the game is no longer going to be developed. So what it is, what it is, is what it is, basically. Um, which they have put a couple of uh, they have they have put a couple of changes into the game that we noticed while we were playing. Like a couple of small things, like quality of life stuff, which I guess could have potentially been like their last, basically quality of life update patch, and that was pretty much it. Um, Y'all were the only people that played it. I mean, yeah, there's, there's not, there's not, it's just not gonna be developed at all. They're not, they're not gonna be developed at all. That's pretty much it. Uh, their UT was terribly designed, anyways. I mean, like, un, un, as it stands right now, it's not, it's, it's pretty good. Like. New Unreal Tournament is pretty good. We played all we played it a bunch. If it wasn't that good, we'd probably all go back and play UT99, which I honestly will probably end up doing now because everybody has it. Or maybe UT2K4 or something. Um but uh but yeah, no, UT UT 2018 or whatever they call the new one, uh is quite good. It just needed more love and they just didn't want to they didn't want to put more love into it. Yeah, 2K4 is probably going to be the next thing that we end up playing for Subnight. I mean, we could still play this. It's still going to exist. It's not like it's going to disappear. Um, but um, but yeah, we, we'll probably end up uh, uh, switching it up and play a little 2K4. That we, we could do like uh, uh, vehicle battles. The vehicles were, were not terrible. Uh, a lot of fun. And also, like, there's a ton of different mods. I would love to play Death Ball with you guys. That would be the greatest. 
Death Ball would just be so much fun. I need to I need to look at I'm gonna look into that. Okay. I'm gonna look into that. You don't know where to get 2K4? Oh, is it just not that easy? I reckon it probably isn't that easy, is it? Uh where wow, where would they sell that actually? Huh. Let me see. Uh, do I even have a copy of UT 2K4 anymore? Oh my gosh, Unreal Tournament 2004 2K4. Let me see. Where can I buy? Shopping. Uh, I can buy it from 10 stores. Is it on Steam? Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Damn it, Kimmy. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. My co-host got my co-host got their stuff together. I think that's a, they had a the, my co-host had a brief a brief kind of lapse in memory. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I own it. Yes. <laughs> Listen, man, I have a lot of games, all right? I don't remember. All right, so good. Maybe we'll play some 2K4, perhaps, perhaps. Uh, let's see, last, the last bit of news. This is the one that I didn't want to, I didn't tell you guys at the beginning because I wanted you guys to be surprised by it, and I hope you guys are surprised by it because I think it's awesome. Ice Cube is set to star in MTV's Celebrity Deathmatch reboot. Celebrity Deathmatch is coming back. That is is fucking awesome we need celebrity deathmatch right now this is this is the time when we need more celebrity deathmatch oh my god i cannot i cannot wait for those that don't know what celebrity deathmatch is it's totally okay because i don't know when was the last time it aired like 15 20 years ago or something like that Celebrity Deathmatch is a claymation, uh, it's, it's a claymation stop motion uh, uh, show where they basically have these celebrity caricatures that will fight. So in today's era, we'd probably have uh, uh, Robert Mueller versus Donald Trump, Donald Trump, and they'll all have like these wrestling moves and it gets super gory and everything. And it's fucking crazy. You remember watching it as a kid? Yeah. It was great. It, it's, it was really great when you understood the pop culture references and everything in it. But, it, but it was also entertaining to watch even if you didn't know, excuse me, didn't know all of them. And so, and so the fact that it's coming back is awesome. Uh, the fact that, that uh, Ice Cube is going to be, I don't know if he's going to be hosting it because they had like Claymation hosts or something uh, in there. So I don't know if it's going to be a different format from that. But uh but Ice Cube is, if you watch, if you watch him in the, literally any movie, he's awesome. So, uh, and he's got a great, great sense of humor. So I'm looking forward to this. Uh, Tek Tekashi 6 9 versus Queen Elizabeth. Yeah, weird shit like that. Like stuff that you would just never, never really think of. But this is, this is huge news uh, for, uh, for probably the best news today. Uh, no, wait. There was one more thing. I totally forgot. And this was, it was actually the best announcement of the Game Awards. Let me go back and dig it up here. Let me see. But wait, there's more. I did. I did, didn't I? It was an accident. It was an accident. Let me see. I think you'll like it. All right. So this is from the Game Awards last night. The best, this is the best news of the whole week era. There's nothing else. There's nothing else but this. This is a story of a video game called The Stanley Parable. You know The Stanley Parable, of course. After all, it was the video game sensation of 2013. Don't you remember all those awards we were nominated for? And this year's winner for Best Narrative is... The Last of Us. The Last of Us. The Last of Us. Papers, please. The Last of Us. Papers, please. The Last of Us. Yes, it was thrilling to be so unanimously recognized by our peers. Which is why we've locked the game's source code away, where it can never be touched by the greedy hand of capitalism. A pristine time capsule of perfect artistic integrity to be preserved for... Wait. What do you mean we never put the game on consoles? <laughs> of course we put it on consoles. We didn't. Excuse me a moment. Stanley! 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 Gotcha! Stanley, I've had a great idea. I want to add new endings and new content, new adventures for you. Won't it be fun? Oh, shush, of course it will. 
we'll package it up with the original game and we'll put it on consoles and everyone will buy it again because they're suckers. Come, come. Daddy needs a third swimming pool. <laughs> so, Stanley Parable. This is the one. Stanley Parable was amazing. It was so good. So fucking good. It was, it was just, it's just such an odd game. Very simple, uh, very simple premise. The, the narrator that you hear basically narrates what you're doing or what you're not doing. Uh, and it's actually very fucking cool. There's a bazillion different endings. It's basically, it's like, it's, it's, it's like you ever, you, okay. You ever see the, um, the, you ever see primer? the movie the time travel movie that's like super complicated like a bowl of spaghetti and then you see the actual like timelines that they draw together and it looks like a bowl of spaghetti so this is kind of like stanley parable of like all the different choices you can make and all the different outcomes that can happen and all the crazy shit it's a fucking bowl of spaghetti there's so many things you could do and you think it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna get the same ending i'm gonna do this thing again and then you change one thing and everything beyond that point changes uh, you're the joke line about the, the Last of Us 2. Oh, yes, 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 The Last of Us. Sorry, sorry. What do you mean The Last of Us 2 is also coming out next year? There you go. Uh, so, it is, uh, that was probably the biggest announcement, uh, for me. For the Game Awards. Uh, that's amazing. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but that's it. That's it for news. We basically wrapped everything else up. Did I forget anything? Did I forget anything, guys? I think we pretty much covered. We tried to cover a lot today. I think we did. I think we went through everything in a timely manner, actually. I think we we're actually hitting about an hour. About an hour. Have you seen uh, Sam's Good? What's it was with the announcer voice guy? It was really good. I, I didn't. I didn't. Cube World. Oh, fuck. Free games from Epic. Oh, I talked about that already. We talked about the Epic launcher. Uh, Cube World. I okay. Yes, I did forget. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, hold on. Let me see. Reddit.com/slash uh, Cube World. Is it Cube World game? Cube World game. Probably Cube World game. I don't know where the fuck it's at. Anyways, anyways. No, there's nothing more. There's nothing more. Somebody wrote an email and said it said. <laughs> Dear Am, this is the last this is the last letter I write your ass. Oh, seriously, it was like, dear, dear Wally, this is the last monthly letter that I write, all this stuff. And then Wally replied with like, oh, we're working on all this stuff and all this, and here's a screenshot and all this stuff. Just keep it, just keeping it, just keeping the dream alive. That's all he did. Just keeping the dream alive. We have no new real tangible information, no dates, no nothing like that. It was just that. A single heartbeat. <laughs> I heard it. There's still hope. There's still hope. Uh, Jeff Kaplan uh, was introduced to stage as Blizzard Vice President. You know what? I did. I missed that actually. I remember when they announced. It's funny because they announced Jeff Kla Kaplan, right? And I was like, I was like, oh babe, this is this is Jeff Kaplan. He's the uh, uh, he's a director of um, uh, game director for for Overwatch or something. I, I basically I basically said exactly what he said at the moment that he said it was I'll explain it to Jen and Jen was like he just said that and I was like oh okay yeah so I totally missed the vice president thing that probably was probably was uh probably was an error yeah I call him Uncle Jeff I was like he's like he's the cool uncle he's a like, cool Uncle Jeff everybody loves him he's the last guy he's the last guy at Blizzard uh that's that's headed a game that we all like I think kind of unanimously like oh yeah he's he's a good guy he's uncle he's Uncle Jeff um whether or not he's received some kind of field promotion or something that we're not aware of, I'm not quite sure. So yeah, only Uncle Jeff can save us now. <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, once once Jeff leaves, I feel like there's really not a whole lot there <laughs> for us. So we'll see. Um, but in the meantime, you guys go buy yourself a Switch with uh, the Diablo 3 Eternal Collection. Take a picture of yourself with it. Try to return it and see if you can't win a Diablo 3 uh, Switch with Diablo 3 with it. So that's it Cabo got leave for the wild team that would be good news actually um thinking you could be saved <sighs> papa jeff mess with jeff prepare for death jeff Kaplan linkedin says he's vice president oh well there you go there you go i wasn't aware that he was made vice president of uh of blizzard as a whole well 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 i guess we'll see i guess we'll see um so that's it guys thank you so much for hanging out 
another great episode of Just News. Holidays are coming up, so the schedule might be kind of weird. Today was something was supposed to be happening, and something is happening, but it's happening later than I thought, which is great, so that way we could do news today. Uh, next week should happen. The week after that may not happen, I'm not quite sure. And then hopefully we can squeeze in one right before the end of the year. So we will see. My name is Mike B. You follow me at twitch.tv slash akmikeb, which you guys right now are here. Uh, Twitter.com slash akmikeb. I'm also on Instagram slash akmikeb photo, not safe for work. Uh, and my beautiful co-hosts, everybody here who helped me get through this episode. Thank you so much. I keep on saying nudes incorrectly, don't I? Nudes. Uh, there you go. YouTube vibe. Get in there. Squeeze in. Squeeze in. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And I will see you guys. No, no, you're fucking up. Sorry, wrong one. Wrong one. No, I'm cutting this part out. I will see you guys later. <laughs>